Floating Atlantic Wind Farm could meet the world's energy needs. Would you believe it if we told you the entire world could be powered by a wind farm in the Atlantic? We're not blowing hot air here. According to a new study, building a deep-sea wind farm the size of India that stretches across the North Atlantic could meet the whole world's power needs. Land-based wind farms can produce around 1.5 watts per square meter, while a wind farm in the Atlantic would be able to generate 6 watts per square meter. Several engineering challenges would have to be overcome. A deep-sea wind farm would have to operate in remote and harsh conditions, where waves frequently exceed 3 meters. Laying transmission cables that stretch across the ocean floor, then connect to floating turbines in open ocean, would be another obstacle. A project that big would also require international cooperation and a whole lot of money. Good thing we all get along so well. That blows. Japanese engineer develops turbine that loves typhoons. A new type of wind mechanism being developed in Japan is designed to not only harness power from the wind, but also to be particularly effective during typhoons. A typhoon turbine created by a Japanese engineer consists of three vertical blades and a central rod. It has an omnidirectional access so that it can respond to wind coming from every direction. The turbine makes use of the principle of the Magnus effect. Air curves when passing by a rotating object and the downward deflection of the airflow produces a lifting force that counteracts the force of gravity, enabling the object to remain airborne. The blades are controlled by the central rod, which can be tightened to slow down or stop the blades completely, regardless of the external forces. Under normal circumstances, the Typhoon turbine can achieve about 30% efficiency, while a conventional wind turbine can achieve 40%. However, conventional wind turbines can be damaged by typhoons, while the typhoon turbine would still function normally in a large storm. The designer of the typhoon turbine believes a single typhoon would be able to generate enough energy to power Japan for 50 years. According to the Japan Guide, about seven or eight typhoons pass over Okinawa Prefecture each year, with about three hitting its main islands. If the typhoon turbine is proven to be functional under extreme weather, then Japan could harvest a significant amount of energy to power itself for a long time. Unique wind system may be key to bringing electricity to developing areas. A Minnesota wind turbine company has signed a licensing agreement that will see its energy technology be used in the Netherlands. Shear Wind has a patented system of harvesting wind power that can produce six times more green energy than traditional systems called Invelox for increased velocity. The funnel-shaped Invelox system captures wind from all directions, even with speeds as low as two miles per hour. The wind is then funneled through a duct where it picks up speed. The accelerated wind is delivered to the generators on the ground level where its kinetic energy is harnessed to produce electricity. Any residual wind will be returned to the environment. Unlike conventional turbines, Invelox keeps its generators on the ground rather than on top. This allows it to produce 600% more power. With its capabilities, the powerful device can be used not just commercially, but also in developing nations and in areas where electricity is not readily accessible. Plan for the world's largest floating wind farm gets the green light. Scotland's notoriously strong winds could pan out to be a blessing in disguise after the Scottish government recently approved plans for a floating wind farm. Existing offshore wind turbines, which need to stand on concrete or steel foundations, are expensive if anchored to depths greater than 40 meters. Instead of anchoring turbines to the sea floor, Statoil, a Norwegian energy company, plans to build a floating wind farm 15 miles off the coast of Peterhead, Scotland. Five floating wind turbines will be installed offshore. The base of each will consist of a floating steel tube filled with ballast. Each wind turbine, measuring about 258 meters high, is then tethered to the seafloor 90 meters down by three moorings. Because they're not actually attached to the seabed, these types of wind turbines are cheaper than traditional ocean turbines and can be placed in deeper waters. Each of the five wind turbines will have a 6 megawatt capacity. Together, the five will be able to power an estimated 20,000 homes. 
In 2014, Scotland generated 11,740 gigawatt hours of power from wind, which nearly made up a third of Scotland's total energy consumption. Statoil's goal with this $232 million pilot project is to demonstrate global market potential for turbines. The biggest ever wind farm is set to be built off the British coast. The UK government might be gearing up for a so-called hard Brexit, but that doesn't mean it's stopping work with European companies. The world's largest wind farm is said to be built 90 miles off the British coast by Danish energy firm Dong. When completed in 2022, the wind farm...